Replacing the rear catalytic converter on a 2003 2.5 liter Nissan Altima. There's where the leak is. It's uh, in the flex pipe. Always wear protective gloves and eye protection. I have a new pair of uh, safety goggles and they're full. The full lens is 2X instead of these. These are like bifocal 2X. The bolts on this are really rusted. So I'm heating them up with a torch and then I'm cooling it down with uh, penetrating oil. And the theory is behind this is that um, they'll expand and then the cooling of the um, of the uh, penetrating oil will uh, shock it and it also will allow it to draw in some of the penetrating oil. Also, tapping it with a hammer is good too. It loosens up all the uh, rust. Cold day outside, probably around in the uh, low 40s. Removing both the bolts for the rear catalytic converter. Now I'm removing the cat back connection. Checking to see what there is left of the threads.
removing the bolts on the cat back. And there's the rear catalytic converter. They have a repair where you can uh, cut out the uh, the uh, flex joint and and weld in a new one. But I just got I just bought a whole new um, back cat. So the one stud on the front cat, it, the threads are completely gone, so I'm going to have to remove that stud. And of course it's really rusted. I got tired of breathing in the fumes of the uh, the uh, penetrating oil, so I'm going to switch to water and see if that makes any difference. Spoiler alert! I broke the stud off. The front cat and the exhaust manifold are all one piece. At the minimum, you have to remove the, um, the alternator to be able to remove that. And since I wanted to use my impact wrench, because I don't know what shape the, um, the bolts, the nuts are on the uh, exhaust manifold, I removed the, um, the cooling fan and the radiator. And to remove the alternator, you have to uh, use a tool to um, on the uh, tension pulley or idler wheel to uh, loosen the slack on the serpentine belt and uh, in this picture you can see it's a um, hook tool that I've got there's two holes that line up that when you uh, take the tension off you can stick something through there and it holds it in place and I've got a hook tool stuck in there and that's the serpentine belt tool This uh, motor had a massive valve cover leak. It really needed a new gasket. This next phase is me uh, removing the um, cooling fan and the radiator.
And to remove the radiator, you also have to take the battery out and take the remove the battery pan. I'm removing the battery and the battery pan. You also have to remove the uh, intake air duct. Then you have to disconnect your O2 sensors and you have to slide the, um, the connector that goes to the aux sensor off the little tab. Undo all the nuts on the uh, exhaust manifold.
And there's the broken off stud. There's the exhaust manifold with the, the old exhaust manifold gasket still attached. So I ground the stud down so I can uh, center punch it to drill it out. So you have to start out with a small drill bit and just keep getting bigger and bigger. I think one of the reasons is, is that my drill bits really need sharpening. And that's, I have a sharpener I bought that I can use with my, um, my grinding wheel. And one of these days I'm going to get it all figured out and um, I'll come back with really sharp drill bits. And then a lot of times when you get to about um, maybe about two thirds of the the, the uh, circumference of the the bolt, if you put the drill in reverse and, and turn it, which would be loosened for the bolt, it it will spin the bolt out. There's the new stud. Looks nice. There's a new exhaust manifold gasket. And this is the uh, good thing I took one to take the radiator out because um, what happens with a lot of the plastic radiators and the valve covers and even the overflow bottles, they you know, after like 15, this car is 17 years old. And, you know, after like 15 years, even 10, I've seen it. They, the plastic can um, just crumble. I took the, the hose off and the, the pipe just, it just crumbled away. I didn't even really, you know, I just touched it lightly and it just, it started crumbling. That stuff, I mean, you could break the whole end of the, 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 um, the connect, the whole end of the radiator off and, you know, right on the highway. <laughs> and lose all your coolant you know i mean and another i mean if it starts breaking like that the internal part of the, the radiator that can get in your cooling system so i would say around 10 years if you got a 10 year old car start checking your radiator and um you know take the the, the hoses off and look at everything make sure everything's good um there's the new uh back uh catalytic uh converter and it's got a port to install another um, another O2 sensor, so I guess it can fit you know different um, applications. And so I would have thought they would have sent something to screw in there, but um, I had to buy those extra.
There it is installed. Looks good. And that's the new radiator. Connect all the brackets. Connect the transmission cooler lines and the bottom radiator hose and top. Install the cooling fans.